Well, good morning and welcome again to our virtual service. It's always so nice to have as many people who are coming and participating with us. Just so everybody's aware, we have decided that we're going to continue with the reserve sacrament practice for the next few weeks until there's a new change coming out of the directors from the bishop. So for now, we're going to continue moving forward. We've arranged for someone to be here on Monday morning. Please call the office if you sure, want to be sure about the times. We'd like you to call at least to give us some idea when you're coming so that we're sure that not everyone's coming at the same time. Our service begins with hymn number one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you have created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending on us Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in the life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and a darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit, fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let the lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day, and God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind of which the waters swam, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creepy, creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he made, created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, 
See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was a morning the sixth day. So thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And also, also with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as we start this sermon again, one of the things about comes when you're working with this new technology is we make mistakes and then we have to go back and redo it. So this is our third effort, I think, of trying to get this right. So hopefully, I get it for you. Anyways, let's move into our time of reflection. This morning, we're looking at these readings that are after Pentecost. This is called regular time. From now until Advent, we will be dealing with all of the messages, all of the teaching about what it means to walk with faith. And this morning, we're starting right at the beginning, right out of Genesis. Genesis using that wonderful story of the world's creation. This is such a beautiful story, talking about, first of all, that simple premise of seven days. Six, six days of labor, one day of rest, that time where we're called to simply stop. And then it talks to us about all of the blessings, all of the things that we need to learn about where we are in our own faith and what it means for us, the basic teachings that all of us need to have ingrained and landed in us in a way that allows us to center ourselves on an ongoing basis throughout our lives. We teach our children from the time they're yay high that these are the things that they need to learn for themselves. So they bring that understanding with them into the adult world. And we go from there into 2 Corinthians. We're dealing with the last message that Paul is giving to his, his people in the church in Corinth, asking them to honor and walk with the teachings that he's offered to them. And finally, from there, we go into that book of St. Matthew where Christ is meeting with his disciples one last time. The commissioning, so to speak. That time where he teaches them, this is where you take this message out into the world. Here is how you do it. Follow this and remember that I am with you always. Through all of it, I will always be with you. Through the Holy Spirit. So we go with these readings and we're starting at the beginning and we're being taught about all the things that we need to understand in order to function well in the world. We're being told about the seven days, we're being told about the blessings, we're being told about all of the things that Christ created in our world. God created in our world. The birds of the air, the moon, the stars, 
the sky, the green, the wildlife, the abundance of so many things that will always sustain us. All of the gifts that have been offered to us on an ongoing basis that allows us to build the very things that we use to sustain us on an ongoing basis. And finally, we're told that we are given dominion over this world, over this environment, over this wildlife, over this, all of the blessings we're given dominion. Now that doesn't mean that we're given the right to exploit. That doesn't mean we're given the right to destroy. That doesn't mean we're given the right to, to use it as our oyster, basically where we can do whatever we want and have no consequence whatsoever. We have been told that we have dominion, meaning we have responsibility for the environment that Christ and God has blessed us with. We are responsible for the environment that we have been blessed with. It's a reciprocal relationship, which is identical to what Paul was teaching his people when he talked to them about how to function in community. You remember all the way through these, both of these letters, he is talking to them about the things that they are doing that are tearing the fabric of their community apart, creating divisions, creating powers and authority, creating those who have more rights and those who have less rights, creating all those things that actually pulls the community apart, builds resentments, creates hurt and heartache. And what we need to do to ensure that that does not happen. And finally reminded that God is with us regardless through this. But we still are responsible for our behavior. At this time period, right now, we're walking in a way where we're looking in the world with a bit of a new understanding. When you look at the COVID crisis that we've been dealing with and how people have had to go home, the reduction, the huge reduction in the use, in the use of fossil fuels, in the use of many of the things that actually creates damage. For the first time in years, our ozone is slowly beginning to recover, which says to us that the environment will recover if we are responsible. The environment will actually sustain us if we are responsible. The world that we live in will continue to sustain us, continue to bless us if we are responsible. We are being taught that very clearly by simply stopping and looking and being aware. One of the wonderful things about this time of year is we're moving into the summer months when there's so much green and growth and wildlife in abundance. Plants are in there. We planted our gardens. We're watching them grow. The fruit is being, is being raised up and the harvest is anticipated simply again by the ongoing blessing that God gives us. And we've been given an opportunity to stop, slow down, to really look, feel, hear, see, acknowledge the wonders that God continues to give us. These are the blessings, and we've been given the opportunity to actually see them for what they are. It is such a beautiful time of the year, time to enjoy, time to relax, time to receive. As we move into these summer months, let us be aware of the blessings that God continues to offer us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the triune God as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join us for the prayers of the people. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to God that through his Son, the will of God is accomplished for the church, the world, and all people for whom we pray. O holy parent, before time you dwelt in love with the Son and the Spirit. In love you gave birth to the universe, filled it with life, and gave birth to us. Through your Son, you redeemed the world, and you sustain it through your Spirit, our Advocate and Comforter. We give you thanks for your care for us, for your love for us, and for sustaining us. O oh, triune God, receive our prayer. Creator God, you created this world and blessed it and called it good and you have entrusted it to us as your stewards. Forgive us for misusing what you so lovingly have provided. Grant that we may learn to use the bounties of the sea, land, and air with wisdom and prudence. Give us the wisdom and the courage to let your creation heal from the wounds and the destruction which we have inflicted. Give gentle and loving hearts to all who care for the land, the fields and forests, and all the creatures who inhabit the earth, its waters, and the air. O oh, triune God, receive our prayer. You commissioned us to go into all the world, making disciples, baptizing in your name, and teaching others to observe all you have commanded. We acknowledge that we have often confused your truth with our own traditions and way of life. In your name, the church has often justified intolerance and violence and masked politics as theology. We humbly ask for forgiveness and pray that as we spread your word, we spread it even as you have taught us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the meek and the merciful, the peacemaker and the persecuted. At this time, we pray for those who have been deeply affected by the unrest occurring in the United States. Bless them and bring them peace. O oh, triune God, receive our prayer. O oh God, our comforter, many of your faithful people are not able to gather with fellow believers in your sanctuary on this, the Lord's day. Be with all those who are struggling with being separated from family, from friends, and from fellow believers, including this parish. Bless, heal, and comfort all who are beset by heartache, despair, pain, confusion, shame, or sorrow. Especially, we pray for Chantal, Barbara, Margaret, Kay, Chris, 
Arthur, Jock, Harold, Shirley, Judy, Evelyn, Lee, Lynn, Corey, Liz, Ellie, Elizabeth, and Russ. Raise them up from the dark valleys in which they wander. Be their light and life, their guide and joy, and return them to the fellowship of all who love and pray for them. O triune God, receive our prayer. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise, bless, and adore you for showing your mercy to those who have died, trusting in your promises. Visit us with your wisdom, love, and forgiveness. Teach us the moves and graces of your triune fellowship. Help us to practice them with one another for our mutual edification. Bring us into your presence so that we may sit at the table with you and with the whole company of the redeemed. Let us gaze upon your blessed countenance and adore you most joyfully as our Lord and God, O Creator, Redeemer and Comforter, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. O triune God, receive our prayer. Almighty God, fulfill now our prayers and petitions as may best be for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, O God, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. You loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. For to the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. Father, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand and awaiting his coming in glory, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, that we may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
I invite you to approach the altar one at a time and to receive the host on the napkin and then to take the napkin with you, please. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
that, of course, concludes our service again this morning. Thank you again so much for coming. As I said at the beginning of the service, we will be having reserved sacrament on an ongoing basis. Patrick Wright has kindly offered to come down and be in the church between 9 and 12. People are encouraged to call the church so we can be sure that we're not having people stack up out in the front. Uh, right now, our building is uh, going ahead as, as we've been planning, and it's actually topping out this week, which means that it's now at its full height. You might want to come down and take a look at it. The crane will be coming down in the next few weeks. The other thing that's happening is that the annex, as we talked about before, the washrooms needed to be replaced. However, over the last couple of months, we've had surveyors in and we've discovered that the building needs a lot more work than we originally thought. There is a survey out. We've been asking Vestry and Corporation and various people who are involved to give their input into things that they thought we should be looking at. Can we put it into the new building? The building will just be simply uh, renovated, but it'll have to require a thorough renovation because both the walls, the insulation, the roof, uh, all need significant work, and that means they're going to have to pull a lot of more apart than we originally had planned on. So if you are interested, if you have comments or things you'd like to see happen, please let us know. We're doing lots of planning right now. We're moving forward. And the last thing is, they just told me that they're putting the Tyndall Stone out on the west side of the annex this week, which means I have to clean it over the next few days. If anybody's interested in helping chipping concrete off of four, four pallets of a Tyndall Stone, please give me a shout. I'd love to talk to you. Anyways, I think that's it. Thank you again. Let us go forth in the world to love and rejoice in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs>